Whether you love them or hate them, security cameras can be found almost everywhere you look. As technology improves, the image quality of these cameras has also gotten better, making 4K IP cameras cheap and accessible to the average consumer. But did you know that some security cameras can cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars? Are these cameras overpriced or is there something special that makes them worth their asking price? Security cameras installed indoors have a relatively easy life, especially if they live in an air-conditioned building. But cameras mounted on the outside of buildings have a much more difficult time. These cameras need to survive years of thermal cycling due to the temperature differences between night and day. Additionally, they need to be waterproof to prevent rain from getting in and damaging the electronics. And for cameras installed in colder climates, they need to be able to operate in temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius during the winter. In order to meet these requirements, camera manufacturers employ a technique called HALT, which stands for Highly Accelerated Life Test. During HALT testing, they put the cameras into a chamber, which is then heated up and cooled down rapidly, hundreds of times per day. They can also control the humidity and vibration inside the chamber, simulating rough environments. Prototypes usually spend a few days in the HALT chamber, which can simulate years of stress on the cameras. If a camera fails at this stage, then it needs to be redesigned for higher durability and tested again. Cameras are also subject to other tests, including a salt spray test to check for corrosion resistance and drop testing to check for shock resistance during shipping. Only if the camera passes these tests is it approved for mass production. Of course, not every camera manufacturer follows these strict quality standards. Many cheaper brands completely skip this type of testing, resulting in less durability and a shorter lifespan for their products. While not every camera needs this level of testing, but for large commercial and government facilities, it makes sense for them to pay a premium for cameras that can last years without needing to be replaced. After all, labor is quite expensive and who wants to pay someone to come out every year to replace a camera? So one of the main reasons why security cameras are so expensive is because they've been engineered to last for years without needing maintenance or replacement. But that's not the only thing that makes these cameras different. Another factor that affects the price of a security camera is its image quality. Image quality is affected by multiple design choices, including whether the lens has a special coating to improve light transmission and the signal to noise ratio of the image sensor. The size of the sensor also plays an important role since a larger sensor can capture more light and produce a better image. The latest security cameras are also able to see in ultra low light environments, thanks to huge improvements in camera sensor technology. They also have wide dynamic range, allowing the cameras to see through windows without over or under exposing the image. Now there's one misconception that I want to clear up, and that is in regard to people who say that smartphone cameras are way better than security cameras. I understand why people make such comparisons, but you need to be careful when you do. Yes, smartphone manufacturers have been upping the megapixels in their cameras for a number of years. So for example, the latest iPhone has a 48 megapixel sensor, while the best security cameras typically have an 8 megapixel sensor, which is about 4K resolution. However, while smartphones can take photos at high resolution, they are much more limited when it comes to recording video. Most flagship phones, including the newly released iPhone 16 Pro, is limited to 4K video, which is exactly the same as security cameras. Here's a quick test comparing the image quality of my Sony Xperia 5 II to a Uniview 8 megapixel turret camera. From this, we can see that the image quality of the phone and the security camera are quite similar. Another consideration is that many smartphones will quickly overheat when recording at 4K for longer than 15 or 20 minutes, 
My phone even displays a warning as soon as I put it into 4K mode, telling me that if the temperature gets too hot, please stop holding the phone. So, it costs more to design a camera that can record 24-7 without overheating, especially if it's going to be used in hot environments. And that's another reason why security cameras can become quite expensive. Some of these cameras also have insanely impressive technology inside of them. For example, there are PTZ cameras that can be controlled to move in all directions, as well as to zoom in. And the zoom on these cameras is scarily good too. Even a basic 25x PTZ can see vehicle license plates from hundreds of feet away, and they only get better from there. Some of the best PTZ cameras in the world can see for miles in the distance. At this point, the image even starts to become wavy because we're seeing the effects of light diffraction. But it's incredible how much you can see over such a long distance from these cameras. Other features in these advanced cameras include low light performance, which I've already mentioned, as well as AI detection for people and vehicles. These cameras can immediately send you a notification when a person or vehicle enters the detection area and all these analytics are done on the camera, so there's no need to connect them to the internet. There are also cameras that support facial recognition, and while it's not commonly used due to privacy concerns, this technology is available in the latest cameras. With face recognition, you can connect the camera to a door access system, so that the door will automatically open and unlock when you look at the camera, similar to unlocking your phone with face detection. You can also add a person's face to a blacklist and immediately be alerted when they pass in front of the camera, which is useful for stores trying to prevent shoplifting. There are even cameras that can detect the color of vehicles and clothing, allowing you to search by vehicle type or clothing color. These analytics all run inside the camera and require advanced AI accelerators, which adds additional cost. The top CCTV manufacturers have dozens or hundreds of software engineers working to improve the performance and security of their cameras. They also work on other software, like the mobile app for viewing cameras on your smartphone or other helpful tools for managing and updating your system. This ensures that you get the latest continuous updates multiple times per year whenever you purchase a camera from these companies. On the other hand, cheaper cameras will be lucky to receive one or two updates before development on the software grinds to a halt. This can leave your system vulnerable to cybersecurity threats and hacking, which is concerning if you have cameras installed on your business network. So hopefully now you understand why some security cameras are so expensive. There's a ton of engineering and manufacturing effort that goes into these cameras, which is completely unnoticed until you take a closer look. It's only when your camera stops working or your system gets hacked because it hasn't been updated in years that you really notice the difference between consumer and commercial grade cameras. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.